Man, that was certainly a lot tougher than any of us were expecting. Welcome back to Brew Crew Nation 98. We are going to break down the Packers' 27-24 victory over the New England Patriots in overtime. And let's just start off by saying that this game was way too close for comfort, given the fact that the Patriots, by the end of the game, were on their third-string quarterback, rookie Bailey Zappi, after Brian Hoyer got knocked out with injury and Mac Jones was out of the game due to a high ankle sprain. So let's first go ahead and start off with a summary of the scoring, and then we'll go through individual stats for the Packers and the overall feel of the game that I left heading into next week. So in the first quarter, the Patriots scored first with a Nick Folk 37-yard field goal, giving the Patriots a 3-0 lead after their first drive. Then there wasn't any scoring until the very beginning of the second quarter when rookie wide receiver Christian Watson rushed for a 15-yard touchdown off of a jet sweep. Easy score. Packers were up 7-3. Then Patriots were able to score at the end of the half when Jack Jones had a pick 6 off of Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau. That never, ever happens. And so the Patriots are coming into halftime with a 10-7 lead over Green Bay. And then on the Packers' first drive of the second half after getting the ball from the kickoff, Aaron Rodgers able to pass for 20 yards to Robert Tunyon, giving the Packers a 14-10 lead. And then on a play that should not have happened, we'll get that in a minute, Bailey Zappi passed to Devontae Parker for a 25-yard touchdown, marking the first touchdown pass by a rookie quarterback this season. And it's from a rookie no one ever expected, given that he was a third stringer on the Patriots. And then with like nine seconds left in the third quarter, Mason Crosby kicked a 38-yard field goal, tying up 17-17. Then fourth quarter, uh, Damian Harris rushed in for five yards out to give the Patriots a 24-17 lead. And then with six minutes, 17 seconds left, Aaron Rodgers passed to Romeo Dobbs to get a 13-yard touchdown to make it 24-24, heading all the way down. Packers had a chance to score at the end, but we, we squandered it. And then in overtime, with four seconds left, the defense were able to make a stop earlier in overtime against the Patriots, and Mason Crosby was able to kick a 31-yard game-winning field goal to get the final score, 27-24. Stats for the Packers, Rodgers with 21 for 35 for 251 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and one sack. Aaron Jones was an absolute monster today. 16 rushes for 110 yards, averaging 6.9 yards per carry. A.J. Dillon came in late to kind of help pound the defense down. 17 carries for 73 yards, 4.3 yards average. And then Christian Watson had one rush for a touchdown. Receiving-wise, Alan Lazard led all receivers with six receptions and 116 yards. Romeo Dobbs had 5 for 47 and a touchdown. Randall Cobb, 3 for 42. And then Robert Tunyon also had a touchdown, 2 for 22 and a touchdown. Uh, Mason Crosby was perfect on a day, 2-for-2 two two from field goals, including the game winner, and 3-for-3 three three on extra points. Um, Pat O'Donnell had four, five punts for average 42 yards and two inside the 20, including a very key one late in, in the game, penning it down, the Patriots down to the two-yard line to prevent them from potentially getting a game-winning field goal. Defense were able to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Rachon Gary had two sacks, including one on Brian Horn that unfortunately knocked him out with a concussion. Then a forced fumble on Bailey Zappi when the Patriots were driving down at the end of the second quarter. And then Preston Smith and Dean Lowry combined for a half sack. And then Jerron Reed had his first sack as a Packer, a massive nine yard loss late in the game. Unfortunately, Adrian Amos also left the game for the Packers due to a concussion. Hopefully, he is okay. And so, let's go on to the overall feel of the game. Heading into this game, the Packers were massive favorites, favored by almost 10 points against the Patriots. But I kind of had a feeling that it was going to be a lot closer than people thought because we just came off a high out of beating Tampa Bay. Our offense has been struggling recently. And Bill Belichick really knows how to take care of defensive football. And the Patriots are good defense. Let's not get that wrong. And the for the first half, the Packers looked very, very rough. We did able to have a good drive and scored a touchdown, but there were two turnovers in the first half that really, really sent the tone wrong, including on a second play for the Packers, Romeo Dobbs fumbled 
And then, of course, the Rodgers pick six that led to points for the Patriots. But in this, I will say in the second half, the Packers offense played a whole lot better. Focused on running the ball more. Rodgers was definitely looking a lot better than what he did in the first half of this game and the last half of the Buccaneers game. And was able to get a lot more going, a couple touchdowns. Offense is running really, really good. Unfortunately, the defense is starting to get gassed a little bit after two really tough games. And the running game for the Patriots was tearing up the Packers, like absolutely insane, running five or six yards every time they got the ball. And then there was a little bit of ref ball happening on the Patriots' first touchdown of the second half because that play was a delay of game. I know you've probably seen it all over social media and because that clock went to zero and they held it for three seconds before that ball got snapped. The defense, understandably, was not prepared for a play to be run because they saw the game clock. It's like, hey, this is a delay a game. And it just led to Devontae Parker being wide open for a touchdown. That play should not have happened. The Packers were lucky that they still had time to affect the game and win that game because if that was like the last play of the game, that would not have been unexcusable for the NFL refs, but I digress. So heading into next week, the Packers are facing the New York Giants in London, England, and that should be interesting. And there's a couple of things that I'm I'm worried about in that game, especially our run defense against one of the best running backs in the league right now in a revived Saquon Barkley. But other than that, I am not too worried about the Giants. I think they are a fraud three and one team. They've been lucky they've played some weak opponents, including the Chicago Bears, who really are just a terrible, terrible offense. And so. Other than Saquon, I'm not really too worried about the Packers winning next week. But we need to focus on Saquon, fix that run D, and I just want to see, for one week, a complete game from the Packers. Because for three out of four weeks this year, we have been very, very inconsistent. We totally stunk against the Vikings on offense. Then we played really well against the Bears, which really isn't hard to do. And then we had a really good first half against the Buccaneers offensively, but and dominated the entire game defensively but then fell off for that half. And then the Patriots game was again, Jekyll and Hyde. First half, offense was poop. Defense was playing really good. Second half, offense was doing really good. And defense, the final looked like they were a little bit gassed from carrying the offense so much. It's kind of weird to say that the most consistent thing for this Packers team so far this year has been the special teams. Yeah, I never thought I would say that coming in. But a win is a win. The Packers are now 3-1. and one. Heading into a very favorable stretch when we have the Giants, the Jets, and then the Commanders before we have a really rough game against the Buffalo Bills. So we should be able to really rack up some wins and hopefully hope the Vikings lose because they had a couple of fluke wins so far this year. And that yep, that's my basically my breakdown of the Packers week four win over a very, very injured New England Patriots. Well, tell me what you guys think about the Packers so far this year down in the comments below. And I'll see you all on Thursday for another Week in Review. Until then, I'll see you all next time.